All right, brothers. Right, let me tell you, brother. Here, here, here. You brothers don't be talking while I'm talking. You even sit quiet. Yeah, I know. But he came to you because you're talking to other people. So what you need to do is just be quiet and listen so you don't be ushered out. All right, security. Usher him out. Security, usher him out. Usher him out. Please don't touch me. Please don't touch me. Usher him me. out. No. Usher him out. Usher him out. Usher him out. Take his microphone and usher him out. Uh, take his microphone and usher him out. Take his microphone and usher him out. Take his microphone and usher him Let's out. Go. Take his microphone. Just a minute. Just a minute. Take his microphone. Usher him out. Take his microphone and usher him out. Take his microphone. Usher him out. 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 Let's get the come outside. of God have an international platform and they wanted me to come outside because they want our platform and they are mad because we won't give them our platform IUIC has just as big of a platform expanding out to Sierra Leone and other parts of South Africa. Okay, they don't need Geno Jennings. And also, Geno Jennings went clout chasing, except in a debate with one of the biggest pop stars in Jamaica. And he called out the overseers of the biggest denomination, the Church of God in Christ in Jamaica. And Geno Jennings has debated several men who were not notable, as notable as IUIC and Bishop Nathaniel. Those men he debated was in awe of, of being on the same stage as Geno Jennings. I don't know if you guys noticed that. Okay? He gets off on that. So, it's actually the other way around. Geno Jennings is seeking platforms. Even if there are smaller platforms than him, he's looking to gather numbers. Okay? Uh, selfish ambitions. But he doesn't want to answer the tough questions sincerely, like who are the true Semitic people. I don't call you Hebrew Israelites. In the 1920s and the 1930s, I believe it was either in New York or Chicago, there was a game called the Purple Game. That's all you are to me. And your purple and gold pajamas, you're nothing but the Purple Game. They say he don't preach God is black. I most certainly do not. I preach God is a spirit. And that's a half truth or omission. Because in John 14, 9, Christ said, if you have seen me, okay, Christ in the flesh, you can only see him in the flesh. You have seen my father, who is a spirit and who is God. You see that? Also, God made man in his image and likeness. Okay, Hebrews 4, verse 12 says, The word of God is living and powerful, sharpening any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow. You see that? Spirit and flesh. It's a great mystery. Man was taken from the ground, the dark brown earth. Okay, this is why the Pharisees wanted the stone Christ. Because he told them he was God. 
and he had the power on earth to forgive sins. Okay? And they could not get past seeing that Christ claimed that he was God while still being wrapped in flesh. So the only other two alternatives is to say God was white, like the KKK in the Catholic Church, or believe the heresy that Geno Jennings teach, saying it was only the spirit in Christ who was God. Okay, the spirit of God was in the Apostle Paul. The spirit of God was in the Apostle Peter. Okay, so is he saying these apostles was no different than Christ? You see the heresy? Give me Romans. Romans chapter 9. And then give me Revelation. Romans chapter 9, and we'll start at verse 5. This is what I think of you so-called Hebrew Israelites, the purple gang. Amen. See, everyone that claims they are Israel is not Israel. That's right. This is the same ones you see on the corners. Cussing. You can see them on social media where folks that videotape them. Beating up women. Stomping them. Slapping them around. Abusing them. They're the purple gang. They be cussing. They be cussing. They be stomping women. You see that? This shows how, just how far he's willing to go to avoid debating Bishop Nathaniel. Bishop Nathaniel corrected him and several other people that interviewed him that some of those men used to be Hebrew Israelites. And they did those crimes after leaving the camp. And there are over 1,500 black men, at least over 1,500 black men who are members of IUIC. And they wore purple and gold marching around the Barclays Center. So don't you think them wearing those uniforms committing crimes would instantly make them a target for mass arrest? You see, that don't make any sense. He's lying. It's the other way around. You know Bishop Nathaniel got them boys in order. And you're not used to debating someone who got numbers and scripture. Okay? You won't be able to usher him out. That's that's why that's one of the reasons you didn't want to debate him. And I'm no big fan of Bishop Nathaniel. I'm no supporter of his. I do not agree with all of his doctrine, but we have to expose these lies. For he is not a Jew. He is not a Jew. Which is one outwardly. Because you got on purple and gold. That's right. And because you read from the Old Testament. That's right. And because you march around bragging about your cheap, dirty, filthy, ungodly, black skin. Go ahead. You see, God was not concerned with trying to make any race superior to another. That's right. Black supremacy is just as rotten as white supremacy. Now, if you didn't read your word, you would presume he speaks the truth, or that this is something that's common sense. But the last time there was so-called black supremacy on the earth, to where there was no integration with the Gentiles, and there was segregation on the earth, that was under the law of Moses. Okay, and God commanded them not to integrate with the Gentiles. But think about that. Okay, so black supremacy and white supremacy is not the same thing. It's far from the same thing. Okay, one was commanded to do so, to not integrate. The other did so according to the flesh, according to hatred in their heart. So it's not the same thing, Negro. Okay, in Leviticus chapter 13, just read this for yourself. Those who had 
white skin or spots developing in the skin, or they had yellow strands of hair or stringy strands of hair, they were to be put out of the camp. To be put out of the camp mean you had no fellowship, no no sacrifice on the altar within the tabernacle for your sins. Okay? This went on for 4,000 years. For 4,000 years, the Gentiles were not brought up. That's why they had to be grafted in. Okay? So it's a big difference. Okay? They couldn't be in the camp under the law of Moses. They couldn't partake in the consecrations and the 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 the, the sacrificial system of, of sins, the killing of, of, of animals, the sacrifice for sins in the sanctuary, that there was no tabernacle to atone before God. Okay. That, that there had to be a new covenant. There was only salvation for them under the new covenant. And I'm going to give you scripture. I'm not going to give everything. Okay, I don't, there's not enough time in this video for that. Okay, but I'm going to give you scripture. You know, so, so once upon a time, God was not dealing with the Gentiles. In Psalms 147, verse 19 and 20, it says, he showed his word to Jacob, his statutes and judgments to Israel. He has not dealt so with any other nation. But Deut Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 2 says, Thou art a holy people unto me, and I have chosen thee to be a peculiar, special people unto me. Above all the nations that are upon the earth. Above all the nations. Okay, Second Estrus chapter 6 verse 56 says the other nations are as spittle. Read your Bible. Other nations are as spittle. Why? So you got all of these men, Moses, Samuel, uh, 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 Joshua. Elijah, Amos, Ezekiel, all of these so-called black men, these Hebrew men, they, against the scripture state, God has not dealt with any other nation as with, with Israel. Okay, they had to be in fellowship and communion, obeisance to the Most High, just to get to the New Testament, to get Christ here. So that there can be a covenant for the Gentiles to, to have a shot at salvation. Okay? Now, these Hebrew Israelites, IUIC, don't teach that. They wrong about that. Okay? So, Geno Jennings is right that if you do not accept Christ, it don't matter what your skin color is, you will not be saved. He's right about that. But that's why I say this is a half truth. Because he doesn't have the courage. He's a platform seeker. Okay, he's a heretic. He doesn't have the courage to tell the other side of the story. How are you going to warn people about their sins? How are you going to warn the dominant society about their sin? You see what I'm saying? Because in 2 Estras, uh, the same chapter, chapter 6, Verse 9 says Esau is the end of the world. Esau is the end of the world. So why is it a disadvantage to be ruling at the end of the world? You see, again, going back to what he said, black supremacy is the same as white supremacy. It don't matter. Look, this is why it matters. I'm going to break it down to you why it matters, and I'm going to play a clip of a video past the Omar Tebow, and that's going to be the end of this video. I'll pick it up in another video. But here's why it matters. To be ruling at the end of the world, as 2nd Estra 6-9 says, Esau is the end of the world, 
This means you were sovereign over the nations to provoke the coming of our Lord. The, 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 the scriptures even say, woe to him who seeks the day of the Lord. It's a terrible day. It's a, it's a day of destruction. So you're ruling over the earth. See, the so-called black men, the Hebrew men, were ruling under the, over the earth under the instruction of the Most High. And when we disobeyed the Most High, there wasn't any end of the world to provoke his coming. No, we went, the, he, he disciplined us. He sent us back into Egypt, spiritual Egypt, on ships. Okay, we went through slavery, went through hell on earth. Okay, so that we can remember the time that we were under the laws and statutes and commandments, hopefully for our people. But the scriptures even say, one third of our people, only one third of our people are going to be saved. That's what the scriptures say. I don't have time to go into that. Okay. So how much, here's the thing. That's white supremacy is not the same. It's not the same. There are some things that you do, that you sanction, that you sponsor, that's an abomination that provokes the coming of our Lord. So how much evil do you have to sponsor to provoke the coming of our Lord? Okay? Jo Joel chapter 3 verse 2. It, 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 these are among the crimes. These are the, the, among the judgments. Okay? There's a bill of sins. The, the bill of sins the invoice is found in the Holy Scriptures. If you read the Word of God, Geno Jennings will never go to these. I notice he. I've watched many of his videos. He never do break down the, the, those middle middle chapters. I'm talking about breaking it down, not just going in and picking one scripture out and then going to a new another scripture in the New Testament. You see what I'm saying? So Joel. Chapter 3, verse 2 says, They scattered my people among the nations and parted my land. You see that? So to be the Semitic people, you have to be scattered through the through throughout the earth, and you do not know your heritage. You were robbed of your heritage, you were robbed of your native tongue. Okay? They've been scattered. Language. The, the, with their language and their geographical location. You see what I'm saying? And, and mindset, the spiritual identity. They've been robbed of that as well. Okay, that word scattered. And they parted my land. Okay, so, so re when Revelation chapter 2 verse 9 and 3 verse 9 said that the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not. You see, you got to go into that. Why is that blasphemy? Because you're saying that Christ, Christ had, had leprosy. Leprosy was sin. You see what I'm saying? Le to, have, to have bright spots on your skin, something like that is, is, is now it's more to it than that. But according to Leviticus chapter 13, if you saying that those are the Semitic people and they are not, the reason why it's blasphemy is you got to remember Christ came through the lineage of Judah. So whatever sin is on the, 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 those people, okay, their physical appearance, everything, you're saying that's pertaining to Christ. And a lot of pastors don't go deep into that. Okay, I'm not going to go too deep into that, man. That's a whole nother teaching. Okay. So, Joel, uh, go down to verse 19. Joel 3, 19 says, Egypt and Sodom shall be desolate for the violence against Judah and the shedding of innocent blood. You see that? So, the violence against Judah, 
there's a bill of sins. Okay, these are the accumulation of, of sin debt that's going to provoke the coming of our Lord. So it's not the same thing. The white white supremacy and black supremacy. It's not the same thing. Okay? There, there are more judgments. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 16 says, Their infants, their infants shall be dashed to pieces in their sight, and their houses shall be plundered, and their wives ravished. Just ask, ask your pastor, why does the scripture state this? You know, and some heretic will always try to say that these things have already happened. You see, they will lie and say these things have already happened. Why would the why would God be so fixated on things that have already happened? Especially knowing that in these same books of the Bible, these are these are the books, same books that prophesied the coming of Christ. So you know it's filled with prophecy. Okay, Isaiah, he's a prophet. Ezekiel, prophet. Jeremiah, prophet. Obadiah, prophet. Amos, prophet. These are all prophets. That's what the word of the Lord was coming to them for. Okay, yeah, there may be a few here and there that already took place, but it's already documented in the scriptures and verified that it already took place. We know the book of Revelation is all prophecy. <laughs> and we know all the things in the book of Revelation have yet to take place. And again, I've already tied things that happen in the book of Revelation to these books, Isaiah and Joel. Okay, and, and I just want you to think about this. All of the things that so-called white supremacy has sponsored, the, the, it, it, all these evil, wicked things, as it says in Romans 1.30, they're inventors of evil things. These are the things that they have sanctioned. Okay? Feminism, slavery, eugenics, Planned Parenthood, which is abortion, okay, the occult, with all these fraternities and, and um, uh, Masonic lodges, the prison industrial complex, the military industrial complex, all the bloodshed, all the innocent bloodshed, okay, then they have the nerve to go and start seminary school. To cover up, again, the bill of sins. Seminary school does not talk about the bill of sins. How can you talk to someone about salvation and you're not letting them know what they're guilty of? This is why it's important to know who the Semitic people are. So you can go back to those Semitic people and, and tell them, hey, remember, God judged you because of A, B, and C, X, Y, and Z, okay, we want to make sure you stay on the narrow path and not be a dog returning back to your vomit. You see that? That's the message to the Semitic people. The message to the Gentiles is, look, you've been grafted in. It's by the grace of God that he raised up the Semitic people, okay? to bring to you the gospel, okay? He raised up an apostle Paul, a Benjamite, okay? A black man to bring you the gospel. Do, do let, let my judgment against my own people. That's what Romans 11 is saying. Let my judgment against my own people be a warning to you. If God did not spare the natural branches, he may not spare you either. You see that? So that's that's the whole point of it. It's not to say, well, black skin is better than white skin. No, that's not what it's saying. What it's saying is let them know the judgments that are coming upon their people because they haven't got it yet. 
Okay, their bill of sins have not, there haven't been any recompense. You see what I'm saying? And he doesn't teach that. That's what, that's one of the things that makes him a heretic. My God, my God, my God. Pastor, how can you say that? How can you say that? That's biblical principles. The wealth of the wicked has always been stored up for the righteous. And the wicked Babylonian system with its finances, military might, its sinful ways, it's got to come down. The wages of sin is death, y'all. There's a curse on it. So as it crumbles, the wealth of it, is going to be moved over. The greatest transfer of wealth in history. All the jobs, all the property, all the coaching positions. Oh, yeah. Hey, come on. Some the luxury and ease of Babylon will be taken away. Third judgment on Babylon. They shall be treated as slaves and captives. They shall be treated as slaves and captives. And this is hard for us, but I got to preach it. It's Bible. It's Bible. It really is. You got to watch what you do to people. Because what you do to people oftentimes come right back on you. We reap what we sow. 